Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here on our YouTube channel. Welcome back to our next video in our video series set entitled Stock Market for Beginners. If you're brand new to the channel, by all means, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so that you'll be alerted to when new videos in this series come out. And most of all, if you like what you see here, hit the like button. Because this is all about the people who are brand new to the stock market, don't forget to share this video to people who are looking to uh, get a better understanding of how to invest in the stock market. With all of that being said, this series has been great. It's ramping up. It's getting you hot and heavy now into the actual trading of the market. We talked about what it's like, what a stock is, what it means, voting shares, passive income, active income. But now we're putting the rubber to the road. This is where the rubber meets the road. A couple of videos ago, we did putting a trading plan together and these next couple of videos are all about expanding on those ideas. We talked about putting the, uh, the trading plan together. The last video was all about knowing when to buy. This week is going to be about knowing what to buy. You got to know the right stocks that fit you. There's a thing. People talk about stocks that you need to go out there and buy. Go buy this stock. It'll make you rich. But does it fit your investment style? And I think that as a brand new investor in the market, you don't take those things into account. Folks, just because somebody tells you that it's going to make a trillion billion dollars doesn't mean that it's going to help you make a trillion billion dollars, especially if you don't have the wherewithal to ride the web, uh, the, the ebbs and flows of the stock. The stock may be a speculative play. You may not be a speculative investor. In long term, it could make some money. Even short term, it could make some money and then lose it all again. If that's not the way you invest, that's why it's, under, it's important to know the type of investor you are to know what to buy. And we classify our subscribers in the market under four different types of investors. Conservative, longer term investors, especially for retirement. Prudent, those are the people who want to get a good little bump in the stock, but they're willing to give up a little safety in order to do that. That's a little bit more of an aggressive play. Then we have uh, the speculative. Man, those are the people who throw caution to the wind. All right. And it's just, just give a go. Uh, and that's it. And then we got the prudent. The prudent person is what the majority of the people in our database are. They want the best of both worlds. They want stocks that go up, but they don't want to give up a lot of risk. So most people fit into the category of being more of a prudent investor. So we have conservative, we have aggressive, we've got speculative, and we've got prudent. So I'm going to stick to where the majority of the people are. Even if you're brand new to the market, let me give you this tid this tidbit. If you're brand new to the market, I would put you more into the realm of conservative stocks. You want to get your feet wet. You want to start making money in the market and you don't want to incur a lot of losses because once you do as a brand new investor, you can blow up your portfolio quickly and that will take you out of the market. All right. From the more conservative side, you're going to be looking at stocks that steadily go higher, steadily go higher, and that will keep you in the game. Now, the prudent person, again, they want the steady high, but they also want to not take on a lot of risk. The conservative investor is not taking a lot of risk. They want the slow, steady, methodical upward move of a stock. The prudent person is willing to do that, but they're willing to take a little bit of dips. All right. So that's the prudent person. The more aggressive person is willing to take bigger dips to go bigger heights. And then the speculative can go all the way down into the doldrums to go all the way up to the mountaintop. So you have to, that's a, I think a great analogy of where you stand. If you just want to slowly climb up, you're conservative. If you want to slowly climb up, but you're really to, you're ready to take some pitfalls along the way on the climb up, that's prudent. If you're looking to fall off a little bit off the, the cliffs before you get back up, that's um, aggressive. And if you're willing to go all the way down to the ravine, to climb your way all the way back up to the top, that's speculative. So if you can put that into your mind and, and now get a better understanding of where you feel fit. So we're going to concentrate more so on the prudent side, the people who are willing to go up, 
but are willing to pull back a little bit. They're willing to give up a little bit of safety in hopes that the stock's price will still keep going up. Now, at the time of this video, the market still is in a little bit of turmoil. So uh, always remember, you always got to start off with the when to buy. Make sure that the market is conducive to what you're trying to do, no matter what kind of stocks you're getting into. Make sure that you're on the right side of the market and our market timing is ideally suited to help every type of investor to make money in the market. So if you're conservative, we have confirm call. If you're prudent, we've got the DEW call. If you're more aggressive, we've got the primary wave. And then if the green light buyer or primary wave, and if you're more speculative, it ain't got nothing to do with market timing or anything. It's usually news driven or something like that. All right. So in our tool, in our system, we have something called Unisearch. It is our searching tool. And if you want to find the stocks that are for the prudent investor, simply go up to the Unisearch tool at the top. Now, if you are not, oh, well, let's go over here. If you are not uh, part of the VectorVest family, we can give you uh, access to the VectorVest system, 99 cents for 30 days to do what exactly what I'm getting ready to do. So you go to the Unisearch tool. From the Unisearch tool, we have all of those different types of people who want to invest in the market. For those who are more aggressive, we have searches aggressive. For those of you who are conservative, here you go, searches conservative. For those of you who are prudent, and this is where we're gonna spend our time, searches prudent. And then for the people who are speculative, searches speculative. Now you sit back and go, all right, well, there's the four different types of investor types. Why all of those different types of searches, these search groups? There's a lot of different ways to find stocks. What I'm talking about in this series is the simple overview of investing, right? So if we're going to look for uh, investing for the prudent investor, how about we go to search as prudent and you'll see there's a lot of different screens here for stocks to find for the prudent investor. So how do you know which one is the best one? Well, when it comes down to the what to buy, there's certain things that you're looking for. I can blindly buy from a search because of the characteristics that the search possess. Let's say I don't have a lot of money in the market and I'm looking for low dollar stocks that are prudent that I can make money in. Well, how about we've got something here called good and cheap. If I click on it, let's go see what the parameters provide for me in respect to this type of search. So stock growth. I want the earnings growth rate because earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. I want the earnings growth rate to be greater than or equal to 7%. These companies are growing their earnings at a clip of at least 7% or more. I want the price to be less than $15. How cool is that to find stocks that have great earnings growth rates that are less than $15? Maybe that's more my wheelhouse, especially if I don't have a lot of money in the market. These stocks are not equal to a sell. So these stocks have to be either a buy or a hold recommendation at the time that I run the search. Relative safety. Ah, relative safety has got to be above 1.25. So we've talked about some of the indicators in the VectorVest system. Relative safety looks at the consistency and predictability of a company's financial performance. Does this company make money quarter over quarter, year over year? And it's cast on a scale between zero and two where above one is favorable and below one is unfavorable. These are stocks that consistently meet or exceed their earnings expectations quarter over quarter, year over year. Earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. Price actual has got to be greater than a dollar. So these stocks fall in between the price range of one and $15. All right, average, uh, Stock average volume greater than 100,000 shares. We want to have liquid stocks. The other indicators I won't get into, but they make them so that they're what we call derby ready. Now I'm running it as of today, the recording of this video. Remember, the market is still in a bunch of turmoil, especially knowing that interest rates are about to raise. So if you watch this at a later date, I just want you to keep in mind what you're looking for. Don't concentrate right now on the date that you're watching it. I want you to concentrate on the concept of what we're looking for. I'm going to run the search. Now, as I do that, the stocks, whoa, 
no stocks come up because that is a product of what's going on currently in the market. How cool is that? That even though I'm trying to find stocks to get into, the search won't yield me any stocks. That's a good thing. It keeps you from trying to force buy into the market right now. Let's go see if I can find you another one. Uh, let's go look at our top VST stocks. These are the stocks sorted by our master indicator, value, safety, and timing in the database. So these are the stocks that are up here sorted by VST. All right, there we go. And from the uh, top to the bottom. Now I'm going to show you how to do something. Let's say I still was looking for lower dollar stocks that were top VST stocks. In the process here, I can go, go to stocks, price, actual, Let's go less than, and let's do that again. Let's go custom value, $15. And let's run it. Now I'm going to look at the top VST stocks in the database that are less than $15. Still want to keep you in your wheelhouse as a prudent investor without a lot of money in the market. Boom. Look at that. All right. Now, look at all of these stocks, or for the most part, are buy recommendations, good upside potential. But what am I giving up? I'm giving up a little safety, right? Remember, as I'm climbing up the mountain, the prudent investor wants good quality stocks to go up, but they're willing to take on a little bit of risk, falling down a little bit in anticipation of going back up. And that's exactly what these stocks are. So let's do this. Let's now, we've got our search. We found some stocks. Look at the prices of these stocks. Nice. And I've got them highlighted. Let's right click. Let's view the stock graph. Let's bring that up. And let's go take a look. So now as I look at the stock graphs, let's go put these on to a longer time period. Let's go put these on a three-month time period. What am I looking for for my what to buy? I'm looking for stocks that are going from the bottom left to the top right. This is, it's pulled back a little bit, found a little bit of a floor. I'm using two moving averages here, uh, a three and an eight. Now let's do this. If you're more prudent, let me give you a more prudent moving average crossover. I'm going to right click on price, go over to add moving average. I'm going to go to exponential. I'm going to click on the number 20. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to right click on price, go to add moving average, exponential, and let's go push it on 40. How about this for a more prudent investor? And this is just something to consider. I'm looking for longer term plays. Let's go to a 20 and 50 moving average. Some of you will say, well, that's way too much. Well, how about that? 20 goes above the 50. Look at that. That's a good longer term. Even if you don't want to do that, let's go with, let's go with a 20 and a 40. Let's bring it down to a 20 and a 40. Same kind of scenario. Look at the two come together. They will keep you these kind of moving averages. The longer the moving average or the bigger the numbers, the longer it will keep you in a stock. Remember from a when to buy, uh, sorry, a what to buy perspective. Let's go look. How about look at this. The 20 and the 40 moved here. Even on the pullback, look how they stayed together, kept you in. Would you be a happy camper? Absolutely. So what I'm looking for, in essence, is look at that. Bottom left, top right, moving up. Nice trending higher. Nice updated day. Great volume. These are the things. Let me take off my camera for a second. These are the things that are, here we go. These are the things that you're looking for in the stock. I want to see stocks that look like this for my what to buy. What else? Well, if I'm looking at a stock and it looks up and down like this and I don't like the volatility, I go to the next stock. I go to the next stock. Whoo, ARLP. Hmm. Pulled back here, but ever since then it's been going up. Look at that 20 and that 40. And again, the 20 and the 40 is just numbers that I'm putting out from a more prudent perspective. But what I'm looking for are what the graphs look like before I pull the trigger. So let me close out of that. No matter what search you look you look for in this, you go through the process of looking at the graphs before you pull the trigger on any trades. All right. So from the perspective of now you're knowing what to buy, understand the type of investor you are. Look in that field. Look in that space. Look in that fishing pond 
of stocks before you buy those stocks. Then look at the graphs. Look at the news. There's a lot of things that you can do, but these are very basic things that you have to do before you pull the trigger on your what to buy. Know the type of investor. Have a tool to help you to find the stocks that you're looking for, whether it's VectorVest or whatever you use. Have a tool that hones in on the top types of stocks that you're looking for. Look at the graphs. With that, folks, this video is over. Yes, I'm at home. I'm a little under the weather, but that's not stopping me from getting this video series out to you. So until the next time, folks, have a great day. See ya.